Hi, everyone. I'm Jill Wenzel, the Executive Director of the Institute, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 10th Annual Symposium of the Wusai Neurosciences Institute. Before we start the program, I'll take a moment for us to reflect on our privilege to be in this room today. Stanford sits on the ancestral land of the Muwekma Ohlone tribe. This land was and continues to be of great importance to the Ohlone people. Consistent with our values of community and inclusion, we have a responsibility to acknowledge, honor, and make visible the university's relationship to native peoples. I am delighted to kick off the celebration of the Wusai Neurosciences Institute today. Since starting this role about a year ago, I've looked at the same sticky note each morning. It has three things on it, house in order, vibrant community, and continued funding for impactful research. This symposium is an annual reminder of why each point is so important to the health of the Institute. Our dedicated staff worked countless hours to put together this huge event so that today they can make everything look easy. Members of the Stanford community have come from around campus to connect with friends and colleagues. And today, you're going to hear just a few words of the many discoveries linked to the support the Institute provides. Thank you for being here to celebrate all that makes us Stanford Neuroscience. And now, Kang Shen, the Vincent V.C. Wu Director, will kick things off. Thanks, Joe. Um, I'm very excited to see everyone today. Um, and uh, so this is going to be a great event to celebrate the 10 years of uh, the USAI Neuroscience Institute at Stanford. Um, so Bill Newsom passed the baton to me uh, about a year ago, and it has been a great privilege to serve this community and uh, to imagine the future together with many of you, um, especially the uh, XCOM uh, and the Silk Council, the, the Councils, and through talking with many of you. So first, I want to uh, express my uh, deep gratitude to Bill Newsom and the remarkable team that he has convened to build this outstanding institute. So I've been approached by multiple consulting firms uh, around the world uh, on advices of how to build a uh, world-class neuroscience institute. And uh, um, this is because I, I think it, apparently we are considered one of the leading institutes in the world in this field. So uh, thank Bill for doing that. And I also want to express my deepest gratitudes uh, towards Clara Wusai and uh, other friends of the Institute and for their uh, visionary philanthropy without which uh, none of this would have been possible. Um, to celebrate the anniversary and our accomplishment, uh, I want to give the member of our community a chance to talk about what the Institute has meant to them uh, in the past decades. So uh, please join me in uh, in joining this six-minute video. At the Wusai Neuroscience Institute, our mission is to understand how the brain gives rise to mental life and behavior in health and in disease, and to apply this growing knowledge for the benefit of society. We do this by bringing together a diverse community of extraordinary scholars and trainees from across disciplines, by building a hub of innovations here at the Stanford Neuroscience Building and in our community laboratories. Our community converges from across campus at Stanford Neuroscience Building, a physical manifestation of our role as the hub of neuroscience at Stanford. Through our grant and training programs, we're seeding collaborative research, activating our communities to explore bold and transformative ideas and technologies that advances our understanding of the brain in health and disease. Early on, we launched the, our Big Ideas in Neuroscience project. These projects connect scholars across disciplines to tackle together questions that none could solve alone. It was really the Brain Rejuvenation Project, initially this big idea proposal that showed us um, a way how to work together with faculty that we don't 
usually interact with and learn from their skills and, and benefit from their knowledge to make this really a bigger initiative and, and tackle questions of brain aging and degeneration from a much broader perspective. And it laid the groundwork for this amazing gift from the Knight family to start the Knight Initiative for Brain Resilience. The Knight Initiative aims to take a really broad look at how the brain becomes susceptible to aging, neurodegeneration, and diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease. Moreover, we want to understand why some people are resilient. This fascinating concept that there are people out there to live up to 100 years of age, and their cognition is perfectly fine. Key to the success of these initiatives has been their ability to engage extraordinary people from outside of the traditional neuroscience field, bringing new technologies, expertise, and perspectives to our understanding of the brain and mind. Being part of the Wuhan Neuroscience Institute have dramatically advanced my research. It's so interdisciplinary. It allows me, who come from the chemistry background, to fully engage in, uh, with the neuroscience community and allow us to develop devices that can directly have a high impact on the neuroscience field. We're also dedicated to advancing new ideas and technologies through seed grants and applying our growing knowledge to real-world problems through our Neuroscience Translate Awards. Neuroscience Translate has been instrumental in creating a project from nothing for us. So when I came to Stanford, I was really looking into trying to find a diagnostic device that could capture vertigo episodes when patients were having them. And it was through the Neuroscience Translate Award that we were able to create this really collaborative team, multidisciplinary, and then have that startup funding to be able to start our first clinical trial and proof of concept for this to turn from a dream into an actual actual device that we're starting to run even further clinical trials on today. Neuroscience Translate has been really helpful for our project in particular, but what we didn't anticipate is how much it would connect us with the Wusai community. So we had, first of all, a wonderful mentor assigned to us who really supported our project, was a fantastic mentor, but also sponsor, and connected us with so many different people who showed interest in our project, accelerated our project, but then also spurred other projects. And so we've just been so thrilled at being included in this community and feeling like we're contributing to Stanford. The Institute has also recruited faculty scholars to Stanford who works across disciplines and have real potential to see new collaborations. Uh, when I came to Stanford, I didn't know exactly what to expect. I knew we would have great students and great colleagues, but uh, it's greatly uh, gone beyond my expectations. I've established, uh, I would say, I'm counting between four and six collaborations uh, in the two years of being here. And these are uh, very deep collaborations with co-advising with other students and, and or weekly meetings. The types of things that I'm doing here, I would not have expected whatsoever when I started two years ago. And that's what makes this exciting. Our training programs are developing the next generation of diverse and creative neuroscientists to be collaborative, interdisciplinary, and socially conscious. The Wusai community actually let me feel like I'm part of a group of neuroscientists who are looking to branch out into more interdisciplinary um, experiments and approaches. I did my graduate studies in cell biology and biochemistry, so I came in very focused on the cellular mechanisms, on how cells in the brain interact, but seeing the breadth of the science of my cohort mates that ranged from systems neuroscience to engineering really helped inspire and expand the the scope of my experiments. The Wusai Neuroscience Institute has always believed that together we can tackle questions that no individual scientists, laboratories, or disciplines could approach alone. We welcome you to join us for this continuing mission. Thank you. Um, thanks, Nick, for... Where, where's Nick? Th thanks, Nick, uh, and the communication team for, to, uh, for putting together this wonderful video. Um, um, these are not, you know, what you've seen here is not just promotional uh, video. It's, it's backed up by data. So we have cultivated a wide-ranging uh, community focused on solving the enduring mystery of the mind, brain, and behavior. Our affiliates 
and trainees include more than a thousand scientists uh, spanning all of Stanford's seven schools uh, and nearly 60% of our uh, university departments. Our flagship uh, big idea neuroscience uh, initiatives build a remarkable campus-wide uh, network of collaborations between hundreds of faculties from 42 departments working together to tackle ambitious questions in brain science. Our landmark uh, Stanford Neuroscience building has become a campus hub for cutting edge and interdisciplinary sciences. And the building is now home to 25 highly collaborative laboratories, research groups from 26 departments in the School of Engineering, the School of Humanity and Sciences, and the School of Medicine. And then uh, uh, the building is also uh, home for six out of the seven uh, community laboratories that are uh, supported by Wusai Institute. And these labs provided our community with the in-house access to world-class scientific facilities, technologies, and uh, expertise um, from non-invasive human stimulation, brain stimulations to advanced microscopy and preclinical MRI. So our investment in neuroscience discovery, uh, engineering, and translational research have catalyzed hundreds of impactful discoveries and many inventions. So technologies, ideas, and approaches developed here are already advancing neuroscience worldwide. And the innovation that we have, uh, our community has made, and uh, the relationship we've built uh, laid the groundwork for, for benefit for science and the society. So as we uh, look into the second decades, I would like to ask the entire neuroscience community to join me in imagining how we can accelerate both science and its human impact uh, using this work. So inspired by the success of the Knight Initiative of Brain Resilience, which is seeking new insight and interventions to promote healthy brain aging, I see us pursuing equally bold research uh, initiatives to advance human health and well-being across the lifespan. Uh, by deepening our understanding of early brain development and its impact on child, children, uh, childhood brain health, as well as the conditions such as autism and schizophrenia. And by pursuing insight and interventions to support healthy brain functions in adulthood with a focus on neuroscience can enhance mental health and neurological well-beings. So I look forward to engage this whole community to guide the Institute with the areas of focus and other emerging technologies that will help us to achieve our missions. So in keeping these themes, uh, we have invited um, speakers who have been deeply engaged in our community and whose work has reflected the ongoing mission uh, to share with us their most recent uh, progress and the discoveries that are made in their labs. Uh, to close this symposium, uh, we, we're very fortunate to, ha to have our institute benefactor, Clara Wusai, and our dear friend uh, of the institute, Corey Barkman, uh, about recent progress and future promises of, uh, in neuroscience in the form of a fireside chat. Uh, this is what will happen in the afternoon. And this will be followed by a poster session and a reception uh, uh, with many of the participants here. So please stick around and enjoy the reception and the poster sessions. <laughs>